Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Huda Tonight. This is a third and final segment of Huda Tonight. Uh, thank you for continuing to be with us. We're going to be talking about, as we promised in the introduction, we're going to be talking about the importance of pursuing knowledge. We're joined by uh, Brother Yusuf Sulehin. Assalamu alaikum and alaykum welcome. Thank you. Also, we're joined by Brother Lukman Hakim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Huda tonight. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, I was telling you before we started that uh, I had been covering some of the in the news segment tonight mm. uh, coming out of Indonesia. And the good mm. news is that all the people who died in that plane crash, uh, all 54 of them have been, rec their remains have been recovered. So, mm. alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, let's start our talk about pursuing knowledge. Yeah. Um, why is it so important for us to do this? Is there a right. specific, are Muslims, do we have a unique calling or order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to yeah. pursue knowledge? And if so, can you talk about it? Of, co of course, uh, Bismillah. Uh, we all know the hadith of the Prophet that um, seeking knowledge is compulsion upon each Muslim and Muslimah, right? But why is that? Why is that important? It's, it's compulsion, it's wajib, it's fard upon Muslim and Muslimah. And if we look at the, the wisdom behind uh, creating the whole universe, I'm not saying the wisdom or the purpose of life for human beings, we know that. But if we look at the last verse and last ayah of Surah At-Talaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin wa min al-ardi mithlahunna yatanazzalu al-amru baynahunna litalamu anna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created seven earths and seven skies uh, and in bet what, what in between them. So you know that Allah uh, is, um, is um, his subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. He's able, he's uh, able to do anything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has contained the, the knowledge of everything. The thing is, the more we learn about Al-Wahy, we know Al-Wahy. And in, uh, we speak about Al-Wahy or Revelation, we have two kinds, two types of Al-Wahy. Al-Wahy uh, al-Mastur, Wahy al-Manzur. Al-Wahy al-Manzur is the seen Wahy, the seen revelation, which, which is the universe. Uh, the written Wahy, which is Quran and Sunnah. The more we learn about Wahi, the more we get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better, right? And when we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better, we, we know how great He is, we, we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better, so we worship Him better. And that's why every time in Islam, uh, in Quran, in, in Sunnah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet, peace be upon Him, they confirm that the scholar, who, who is a scholar and worshiper, is, is better than a worshiper only. You know, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ وَالْدَرَجَاتِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives high, higher ranks to those who uh, believed and those who have knowledge. And, Allah, and the Prophet, peace be on him, so would say, فَضْلُ uh, الْعَالِمِ عَلَى العابد, the, the preference uh, of uh, the scholar, of, uh, um, between the scholar and, and, and the worshiper, that the scholar is like a huge star. Uh, and uh, and the, the, the worshiper only is just something not that huge, you know. Uh, so that's the importance that, all, that the knowledge is the, w the way to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have this simple rule in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never worshipped by ignorance. You cannot worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by ignorance. That, that's and, and the point is that uh, uh, Islamic uh, faith is rational. Right. It, it, it doesn't true. require you to blindly believe something, to follow a tradition that mm -hmm. you've been taught or grew up in, but to evaluate your own self, uh, to learn and explore history and knowledge and uh, creation, to come to your own conclusion. Right. And that's why some people would say, you know, you're only Muslim because you're, you're born Muslim. I would say, yes, I was born Muslim, but when I, when I became uh, to the age of majority of reasoning, I chose Islam. And that's why lots of people, they abandoned the religion. And lots of people grew up in Christianity or Judaism or whatsoever, in, or, or in atheism, and they find out this is not the true religion. And we have this conclusion in Islam, it's, it's, a, very, it's a very basic rule. There is no two truth in, in anything. And there is one complete, comprehensive, true religion, and we know, alhamdulillah, it's Islam. 
Mm. So if we, yes, we are born Muslims, many people are born Muslims, but they are, they are required when they grow up to, to use the reasoning to accept Islam and embrace it uh, by, their, by their hearts, by the reason, by the reasoning and, and, and rational, mm. and, and that's why it's you know. I I, I don't know if you uh, heard the end of the last segment, segment two. No, unfortunately, I was, I was talking a little bit about uh, my my walk to Islam. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this uh, is uh, I think uh, a perfect segue be or connection between mm -hmm. that subject and this subject. It was because of my pursuit of knowledge right. that I eventually found my way to Islam. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is uh, something that uh, the rationality of Islam is uh, very compelling. Uh, and so, uh, w w w what about Brother Lukman? Mm. Um, does this only apply to our our religious faith, or is it uh, also in other areas of our lives? Our, the, the the order, the obligation to pursue knowledge. Mm. <coughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to comment. As you said, that actually we Muslim we we are obligated to seek knowledge, and also uh, we are not obligated to have faith blindly. It is useless in mm -hmm. Islam. Mm -hmm. In fact, if I can quote Quranic verses, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah." Fa'lam, you should have knowledge first, and then. Annahu la ilaha illallah, and then testify that there is no one, uh, there is no God but Allah. So, if you, if you recognize that Allah is your Lord, mm -hmm. you 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 have to know Him first. Who is your Lord? Who is who created this universe? To have I mean knowledge first, it is important than to to have uh, faith blindly. So in Islam we. We should have knowledge first before having, I mean, faith. So it's different from another religion. If we, uh, for instance, in Christianity, they have uh, the concept of Trinity, mm -hmm. and it's so uh, difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. And some scholar of Christianity said, the more you don't understand, the more you have faith. <laughs> so it's <laughs> nonsense in Islam. Yeah. And Islam, every Muslim, we are should understand the concept of God. God, that there is no one has right to be worshipped except Him. Mm. So this is, I mean, the beautiful thing about our religion. Our religion is the religion of reason. Mm. So mm -hmm. we can question anything in Islam. There is no any Islamic teaching, Islamic doctrine that we should accept them blindly we can question everything in islam so islam is the religion of reason itself so uh, coming to your question whether it is only i mean religious knowledge or scholar knowledge mm -hmm. actually uh, if we are going back to what the prophet said tolabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim seeking knowledge is obligation on every muslim the prophet doesn't specify whether it is religious knowledge mm -hmm. or scholar knowledge. Mm -hmm. But we as Muslim, at least we have to study our religion. If you are Muslim, the first thing that you should know is the prayer, because the prayer is the first obligation every Muslim. And then if you have wealth, you, you, you study about the zakat. And when the month of Ramadan is coming to you, you should study about Siam, about the fasting. And then if you have enough means to go to Mecca, you should study how to perform mm -hmm. pilgrimage mm -hmm. to Mecca. Mm -hmm. But we also, we have to understand scholar knowledge because we are living in, in multi-dimensional problems mm -hmm. in our life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, if we don't, understand scholar knowledge so muslim we are pity to be muslim <laughs> yeah I, I i just want to say that all these five pillars that you just mentioned uh, that we should know about how to make the prayers and to perform hajj yes and yes fast. and also for instance you want to to, to 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 be the trader you should understand i mean i mean uh, about some islamic principle in trade whether 
what you are dealing it is I mean it consists of usury or riba or not mm -hmm. because riba right. is forbidden in Islam usually our interest is forbidden in Islam as a Muslim if you want to engage in trading you should understand uh, what is the uh, inter uh, what is the uh, what is something that that consists of riba or not we should understand that if you are for instance you want to be the doctor what is kind of operation that is a law lawful in Islam what is the operation that are unlawful in Islam we should understand that so I mean this obligation is not only uh, religious sciences but also scholar sciences mm. all areas of life yes and, and, and I think it encourages not only does it require rational thought or an active intellectual life to be a Muslim uh, but to continue to be a Muslim to fulfill all these obligations the Islamic jurisprudence is very detailed there are all aspects of life from how we clean e to yes, how we yes, engage yes. in uh, this affairs. is why this is why Islam is not religion Religion is about spirituality. You go to the church, you go to the mosque, it is religion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Islam is the way of life. Every aspect in our life, we will find the guidance in the Islam. Until when you want to go to the toilet, the Prophet teach us how should Muslim go to the to yeah, toilet. Yeah. Everything our, in our life, we can find guidance in Islam. Mm. This way, Islam is not only religion, but Islam is the way of life. Way of life. Oh. Brother Yusuf, I think this is also why it helps us to understand why we have such a rich scientific heritage right. mm. in uh, Islamic history. Yes. In if Andalus we look yeah. uh, closely, um, uh, there was a very nice, very nice lecture by uh, engineer Fadl Sulaiman, if, if anybody wants to check it on YouTube. He was saying that uh, Arabs were ignorant. And what made Arabs uh, so boosted in, in knowledge and very enthusiastic in, 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 in discovering science and, and everything was Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, and <coughs> we, we all know before Islam it was time of jahiliya. I mean, it's, it's even taken from the word of ignorance. Uh, if we look to Quran, for instance, he would tell them, uh, he would speak about them about earth and skies and it, w it will tell them explicitly and implicitly that your limit is the sky. And that's why Arabs, when they started embracing Islam and learning about Islam and reading uh, and reciting the Holy Quran, the Noble Quran, I mean, uh, they knew that th it is that's something that we need. And we didn't have only like men who are scientists. We, have, we, we had women and we had the, the first university in, in the whole world was launched and founded by a, a Muslim woman. Uh, if we so that's subhanallah if we look closely and now also there are lots of uh, very you know uh, popular videos speaking about this civilization of today and the technological advancement mm -hmm. it's in a way or another it's all not all but most of them are taken from the advancement that muslims have done in the middle ages right. the, the golden ages for muslims and mm -hmm. the dark ages for you know from you for europe and, and uh, etc um, what you have mentioned I is called in Islam, and I, I always say that because I, I think it's very important. It's called what Muslim must be aware of, and, and it's, in, uh, it's, in, it's in three aspects, and it's something that Muslim cannot be ignorant of. He, he doesn't have to be Muslim, doesn't have to be scholars scholar in these topics, but at least have the minimum required uh, things in aqidah, in creed, uh, and theology, in fiqh, and you mentioned all aspects of fiqh, uh, fiqh of transactions, uh, fiqh of uh, cleansing or cleaning, uh, fiqh of worship, mm -hmm. all of them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in tazkiyah, how to purify the heart, how to make the repentance, how, how to, to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, all what we call the actions of heart and the purification of heart, all of this. This is all called tazkiyah. Uh, and there is a minimum required uh, in these aspects. If we don't learn them, if, if, if a Muslim is illiterate, he can learn them by listening, by mm -hmm. attending mm -hmm. um, 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 mosques or uh, uh, mosque or sermons, but he, m he or she must learn it yeah. in mm -hmm. a way or another. Yeah. And w when we come to other aspects of life, it is not separated at all. And the most, and the more Muslim, and the more the Muslim acquire knowledge and uh, seek advancement in any in any knowledge, 
as I said just before, the more he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. This is the, the purpose. And that's why when we speak about knowledge, it's very important to speak about it is not a target or an aim by itself. So, so uh, you know, what's very uh, ironic to me is uh, the fact that a lot of these uh, technologies and scientific knowledge mm. uh, that is coming out of the West, the Western countries, For is now. really recycled and repackaged mm -hmm. knowledge that was uh, originated from Muslims mm. Mm. Uh, 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 hundreds of years prior to the you know, the growth and development of the European countries. Mm -hmm. uh, we are ready for our first report. Brothers, uh, we'll take a look at the report and come back to continue the discussion here. Okay, so the stages of learning knowledge, okay? The first one was silence. You have to be silent to actually process and learn the knowledge. Number two is listening. Listening is very, very important, meaning that you listen attentively. Yeah, you listen attentively. A person can be silent, but his mind is wandering off somewhere else. He's thinking about something else. His mind's sitting in the playground, or his mind's in his friend's Xbox, PS3, whatever it is. His mind's over there. The proper process of learning won't take place if your mind is somewhere else. So you have to be silent, and you have to listen attentively. Number three, memorizing or understanding and in our case right now is understanding you can listen yes you're listening but you have to also understand as well you have to understand what is being taught and the content as well that's very very important as well understanding and if you're memorizing something so quran yeah you're listening to quran and then you're memorizing it majority of the cases for science uh, english would be understanding for history it might be memorizing you have to learn the dates by heart so you have to understand it while you listen and while you're silent as well so understanding is taking place within it practicing is one of the most uh, beneficial ways yeah you learn something you put into practice that thing you learned will fully be embedded into your uh, brain and you also you will understand it fully yeah practicing now the question might come up how do you practice english like you learn a subject in school how do you practice it there's always ways to practice it for example it might be english you learn how to the teacher taught you how to write a letter and you practice it by actually writing a letter and sending it off to someone. For history, you've been taught a certain battle. You can play, you practice the battle out, yeah, in a role play or something. Science, experiment, they taught you, okay, this does this, this does this. You put it into practice like that. There's always ways to practice it. And in Islamic knowledge, there are hundreds and thousands of ways to practice whatever has been taught. And the last one, preaching. Yeah, as we mentioned before, 90% of what you learn 90% of what you learn stays with you if you preach it and you tell other people about it. Yeah, you tell other people about it, the preaching will benefit you the most. Yeah, it benefit you the most. And I've told you about it in, uh, previously as well. Right now, your students, yes, you will understand. Yeah, you, you have to understand but only 20-30% of it. But when you become teachers, when you preach to other people, the knowledge will stick to you more. At the moment of time, you might say, okay, I, what, what, we, what you learned two, three weeks ago, you might have forgot. And I don't blame you. Yes, when, when we were students, what we learned yesterday, we will forget it straight away. Yeah. But how do we learn it again? Is when you teach it to other people. You teach it to other people, it sticks in your mind. Yeah. And that's the best and most beneficial way. You're teaching other people. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to uh, the third and final segment of Hadda tonight. We will continue our discussion on the importance of seeking knowledge. We hope you appreciated the short report helping us. And he had some very good points uh, helping us to maximize the, the knowledge acquiring process, being silent, uh, listening and understanding what's being presented. Sure. Uh, before this, uh, we were just talking about all the uh, rich history, the Islamic history, and how w w Muslims generated so much uh, mm -hmm. that really not only influenced but was exported to the powers that be now, the European powers before they wrote. In fact, this knowledge, these technologies helped the European countries come out of the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, the, it was the opposite, the developed... And, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we can't blame them. We would say this is the right thing to do for them. They did the right thing. Who is, whose fault is it? It is our fault that we uh, uh, 
uh, unfortunately Muslims at, at some point it was the decl like you know the decline um, so it's it's not anybody's fault if if they learn uh, from other civilization and they apply and they uh, import knowledge this is totally you know and even Muslims they they had the countries open for anybody to go to go and learn anybody from Europe and at some point uh, old people from all over the world now you know we learn in English if you know if you want to really learn something you learn it in English because it's the <laughs> the, the language that controls the, the knowledge of the world, most of it. At some point, anybody who wanted to learn anything, they will learn Arabic and then learn that uh, branch of knowledge in Arabic. You know, it's, it's kind of domination. And we, we're not speaking about domination. When we Muslims speak about domination, we're not saying it's domination. We say uh, because Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us uh, the, the, the method, the only true method to apply justice and, and truth in, on earth, that's why we have this istikhlaf, that we are successors of Allah on, on earth. And when we speak about knowledge uh, from an, an Islamic perspective, we say we learn because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the, the, uh, the, the things that he appointed human beings to do on earth is b build this earth and, and, and make civilization and, and make it beneficial. But on, on other hands, in materialistic or non-Muslim approach or non-Islamic approach, it will be just, it is a a humane or a human being distinct to to build civilizations and and learn about things we, human being is a human being by learning we when we when we we're, when we're born we start learning we start learning and discovering what's around us we start speaking uh, uh, and listening we start walking and if we stop learning at some point we're actually we're actually growing as we're growing only physically but um, a human being, and sp like we speak, speaking Muslim-wise, a Muslim must be learning uh, forever. Mm -hmm. till, um, we, I mean, as long as he is alive. Yeah, he we, is alive. We, we need to be committed to, uh, to learning and right. no pursuing knowledge for the rest of our lives. Right. We can never learn all things for a number of reasons. There's only so much we can retain. Uh, the knowledge and the information is constantly changing. Uh, we're learning new things, and so and we should all be committed to. And we know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says in Ayat Al Kursi, "Wala yuhituna bi shayin ilmi illa bi mashaa." He is the only one, Subhanahu wa Taala, who knows everything about everything. But whenever we learn more, we know how ignorant we are, and we know how how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is more uh, an all knower. Yeah. The last thing I would just um, to to turn it to him is um, sometimes we confine in, on these uh, in these days we confine learning. You know, in schools, universities, and courses, and, and that's it. Learning is not like this. Learning is much broader and, and, mm -hmm. and much, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, much broader concept mm -hmm. that we have to take care of. It's not learning is, mm -hmm. lear experience is learning. Mm -hmm. When we have such a, a, a bad or negative experience in mm -hmm. our life, we learn from it. That's so right. that's learning. Uh, everything that adds to you as a human being is learning. Right, you know? that's right. And everyone doesn't have the same... Um, Mood of way learning, mode of learning, right? You know, mm. yeah. Uh, we have to know about mm. ourselves too. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I just wanted to say, brother, look, man. I think um, this is helps us to understand the value of reasoning with uh, our children when we raise them up. This model that says, "Do what I say because I say do it," regardless of if I'm doing it or not, it doesn't work, mm. right? It creates a rebel. Mm. All right, and so if you have a child, you're appealing to their intellect. Mm. You're saying, well, the reason that we have to do X, Y, or Z is because, and, and once they catch the idea, then, you know, you've, you, you know, you not only taught them the reason behind it, and they can take it and own it, take ownership of it, mm. uh, but uh, mm. be better um, at, uh, at carrying it out, mm. you know, whether you're there or not. Mm. Mm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ju I think uh, what I'm just saying is that <laughs> we have a part of our Islamic ways in raising our children uh, is a part of the rationality of Islam, right? The Islamic way of raising children is with mercy and tenderness, yes. not with, with a stick and say, you know, do whatever yes. I say because yes. I will hit you if you don't. Yes. That's yes. not the Islamic way. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. It's to appeal to the intellect. Yes, yes. Mm. Okay, if, but uh, I would like to the comment, uh, comment how the Islam actually, Islam came as scientific revolution. 
So if you look at in the time of the Prophet, before, uh, before coming of Islam into, into uh, Arabia Peninsula, we have the term, the time of ignorance, mm -hmm. where we call them the time of ignorance, because the, the people didn't pay, uh, I mean, didn't pay attention to the knowledge. Mm. Although the Arab people in the time, they were, I mean, very eloquent in the rhetoric sign, and also in, in, in the rhetoric sign, and also in the poetry. Mm. They were very famous in this field, but Islam came to them. And uh, and the, the 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 Gabriel came to the Prophet Muhammad and gave him the revelation that is the Quran. The Quran is, I mean, uh, I mean the sort of scientific book that coming to to the Arab people before uh, in 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 Arab Peninsula. The the Quran is very great because Al Quran. The first time Al Quran came to challenge their ability in poetry and, and 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 also in rhetoric, the Quran said, "If you can produce something like the Quran, let's pro you you can produce it." But they didn't able to do that. So it is I mean scientific revolution that Islam came from came to the Arab people, and also Islam is. I mean, the religion of science, because Islam came, and the first revelation that is Ikra, read. Right. Yes. It's, I mean, very unique, because, I mean, although the prophet is illiterate, the, the prophet, he could not read and write, mm -hmm. but Allah gave him, Allah gave him the Quran, that is the book, that is sources of any knowledge. Mm. So you, you, you can imagine, so it is, I mean, very unique and very beautiful. Mm. So Islam came as sort of scientific revolution. And also if we are coming to the Middle Age, we have, uh, as my brother said, we have the term Islamic golden era. Yeah. Uh, and actually we produce my scientific and philosophers, especially right when Islam came to Andalus, uh, uh, Andalus in s Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. So we have many great philosophers and scient uh, scientists of there, like Afiros, Ibn Rush, mm. and also we have Afesina, we have, we have Al-Farabi, many great philosophers. And actually the Western uh, world they inherited the Greek philosophy through the translation of the Muslim that they have uh, done. Wait, I, again, mm? uh, r repeat this and... Mm. You, you, you know that the Western, Western people right mm. now, they inherit the Greek uh, philosophy. Yeah. Actually, they inherit the Greek philosophy through the translation that the Muslim uh, philosophers mm, okay. uh, have been done. All right, Brother Lukman, I'm oh. so sorry. We have run out of time. We've okay. reached the end of the program. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. Okay. And, and I really like uh, all the points that you both made. They're very mm. powerful points. Mm. Allah's chosen method mm. to civilize and to raise uh, humanity mm. was through education, an education process, yes, telling absolutely. Prophet Muhammad through the angel Jabril mm. uh, to, to write, to, to read. Yes, right? yes. So, so uh, yeah, thank you so much. I think we've made the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this topic would take like three days speaking, you know. All right. Thank you again for being with us. Well, right, thank you. It's a wonderful pleasure. We have reached the end of the program for today. Uh, Hara Tanai uh, will continue tomorrow, inshallah, with more news, information, and discussions. Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.